Hello and welcome back to another delicious episode of Let's Talk Homemade Pizza. Hello and welcome back to Let's Talk Cars, a show where we think that the Fart Time Mini is the god of all loud noises and we make in-jokes that we know you won't get. So, since the beginning of the car automotive industry, we've been gifted with some amazingly beautiful machines. And of course, on the other end, some terribly ugly machines. That's what we're looking at today. So, quick thing. This is, I think, my first actual really two-part video because my winter break sadly ends in two days. I have to go back to school, and I want to finish up season three before that happens. So yes, these are parts one and two of the ugliest cars on the road. Now, quick things about these cars. They may have been cool looking when they came out for the time, but we're looking at them from a perspective now, and looking back, some of these styles are pretty dated. Anyway, let's get going. Also, another quick thing is, we're not gonna be talking about cars that are intentionally dumb looking, so no micro cars. Sorry, Peel, you're funny, but you don't belong here. So yes, the um, Pontiac Aztec. Now, Eric Dietz, my friend, and I've actually had him on a coast before, before, uh, he is a big fan of this car because it has a folding tent, which is cool, but it has all the appeal of a brick covered in glitter glue. It's just stupid, like, it's ugly, it's not aerodynamic, it's most, it's most well known for, apart from being ugly, being in a singular, or I mean, a few episodes of Breaking Bad, but that is it. It's a car that's purely known just for its ugliness, unlike some other cars on this list. Now, I have nothing against Pontiac, or had, they don't exist anymore, they went back up the same year as Saturn, I think. GMC folded that back in as well. But, um, yeah. No, seriously, I didn't have anything against Pontiac. Um, maybe have some cool cars, definitely. Firebird, great cars. The Aztec was their most, I think, popularly failed foray into SUV in crossover land. It was just not a good car. It didn't drive very well. It didn't handle very well. The gearbox was sticky. And it sounded like a dog turd going backwards up an, ex up an exhaust pipe. It was not a good vehicle. And, uh, oh yeah. Did I mention it looked bad? Let's move on, shall we? Pizza. Hmm. Okay, so I'm pretty sure everyone watching this knows about the Ford Anglia. The extremely ugly Ford car that was known for being... Extremely ugly. Also unkillable. But my point being is that someone at Section decided, let's make that, but give it a huge dent where the front should be and just make it look even worse. Now this is the Citroen Amy. Am I? A me? I, I don't know. I actually went to this car and was doing research for this video, but oh god, I wanted to like this car so bad. In fact, there are some cars that are so bad they're funny. This is one of them. Now, the car performance is about the same as the Ford Anglia. It wasn't that great, but lasted a while. Especially considering it's a French car. Yeah, they don't make anything exciting for Bugatti, which is actually owned by Volkswagen. So is it kind of German? I don't really know. Anyway, this car is interesting. Um, It came in four different shades of light blue, a shade of white, a shade of tan, and a shade of pink. That's the only choice you can get with this car. Um, you can actually get this car in a V4 engine, so if you guys watched my video on car engines, that, that came out... It should be, but okay, I filmed it yesterday, but it came out the day of today's filming, which is January 14th, 2019. There you go. Um, yeah, had a V4 engine in it. Um, it was French, so it was probably addicted to some sort of baguette fuel or whatever, I don't know. Uh, seriously though, it's a bad car, it's an ugly one, but it's so ugly that it's just too damn funny. Let's move on to something a little bit more... Serious.
And of course, when I say serious, I mean derpy as hell. The Fiat Multipla is known for looking like a pile of blubber pressed into a mold. It also known for being the ideal car for old people, or so Top Gear thought when old Top Gear UK, uh, with uh, yeah, with Richard Hammond, I think it was Jeremy Clarkson, tried to build the ultimate car for old people out of this, and they almost succeeded. Possibly because it already looks like your old grandfather's tennis shoe. You know, smelly, worn in, and well, in most cases, in unappealing colors of white and tan. Uh, it literally, it looks like they took just like a box, like a tray, right? Put some wheels on it, and then tried to add like a, you know, like, in, like the, let's say like Google SketchUp or whatever, or like Gary's Mod, video games like that, or just design tools like that, right? They did, forgot to smooth out the front hump, so now you just get an awkward six inch up jut where there should be a smooth transition to the hood. Seriously, you know what those wet weather buggies that you see? It's one of those, just you know, a lot less interesting and appealing. It's just, I, I don't understand it. And the fact that it sold for so long, over 10 years in some areas, and the fact you can still buy them in new-ish condition today with less than 100,000 miles on them, is insane. Wait, no it isn't. Because no one wanted to drive 100,000 miles in the first place because that handling was piss poor. Zero to 60? 9.2 seconds. I know it's a Fiat, so it won't be fast, but that is a slug. There are cars from the 40s that did it faster than that, like regular cars. This is an embarrassment on the automotive world. Now on to uh, another big name brand that's bitten the dust hard in the last recent years, but uh, this is just disgusting. Ah, Nissan, you used to make actually really cool cars. The Z Series and the Fairlays were amazing cars. And hell, even tried something new-ish with the Leaf, even though it bombed. I'll give you credit for that. You tried something new, and then you made the Cube. Why? Oh, God. And see, the point about this car I don't like. Okay, it looks like a brick. Fine, whatever. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to have a lot of space, right? But then you go out and buy a Honda Element and realize, wait, this has even more space and it's cheaper and it's a better car and it's more reliable because it's made by Honda. So there's no reason to own the Nissan Cube. It's a bad car. It's too wide for city traffic. Literally, I've been stuck by some of San Francisco plenty of times and a motorbike just trying to squeeze through almost got forced off the lane multiple times. It's just... Too fucking fat! It goes into, it takes up a whole lane, literally. It's just not a good car. Now, apart from that, it started a trend for other such cars, just like the next one on our list. Yeah, okay, you may know Scion from being the Toyota edition to the US market. I don't know. I only really know them apart from this abomination of a vehicle for making the Americanized version of the Toyota GT86, the Scion FRS. But apparently they also made another car before they shut down called the Scion XB. Extra bullshit, or extra bulky. It's arguably worse looking than the Cube just because it's flatter. It's got an extended hood from a, a Skyline GTR. It, it has the exact shape at least. And the front of it looks like someone with too many jowls. Come on, stop being souffle and, uh, you know, do something with your life. Seriously, this car is just an embarrassment on wheels. And it looks, the back end at least is nicer than the Cube, we'll give it that much. Because it's not trying to be as, uh, it doesn't have rounded, as, as it doesn't have as rounded windows, which always pissed me off about the Cube. But it's not in any way a good vehicle. Also, in terms of the colors that came here, ready for this? Blue, okay. This ugly gradient gray black. All right, whatever. White, sure. Dark green. All right, I can live with that. Sunset orange. 
Excuse me, what? You know like that brownie color, color ornaments go on the Aston Martin DB11? Yeah, it's that, but somehow worse, because it's on a fucking box on wheels. People make jokes about, oh, all cars are boxes on wheels. This is literally a box on wheels. And that's why it should actually, if the cover goes through, be the uh, cover car for this video. Anyway, I'm gonna get off this topic in a second. It's a little, at least a little bit more aerodynamic. Let's move on, shall we? Ah, oh, the lovely Ford Probe. What does it really say about this car that people haven't said before? It's nasty looking. It's like the two early 2000 Mustang and the Mazda MX-5 Miata had a baby, which is not a good thought at all. And it has the name Probe, which uh, brings up some very bad implications of other things that should not ever be connected to the world of cars at all. Uh. Seriously though, the car's performance wasn't actually that bad. But remember, we're judging it here on its looks. It was an okay car to drive around in. Um, especially was a bit wobbly. But as far as it looked, it's about as bland as you can get. As I said, Mazda, MX-5 Miata, plus early 2000s Ford Mustang. It's hell spawn, it's ugly, and hell, it's one of the worst things Ford has ever produced, at least visually. Even the Pinto looked nicer than this. And hell, because yeah, hell, even the Pinto on Mustang Heritage, this has, the only thing it has going for it is working against it. And that's its name, Probe. Ugh. Yeah, you probably knew Suzuki would be in here somewhere. I mean, in the US, we do not see a lot of Suzuki. It's probably because we've not really sold them here since 2013. I maybe see five a year max, and normally it's an Alto or a Swift or one of their big trucks. Oh, big trucks, or their crossover SUVs. Now, this reminds me of, you know those little cars that kids can drive around in? Like, you buy, like, they're like, expensive or whatever, they're battery powered and kid, kid, like little, like, uh, five-year-olds sitting around and driving around the house, the electric ones. Yeah, it's like that. Also, I never really liked the T-bar arrangement. I know it was because of America's crackdown on convertibles and all that type of stuff. I, just, I still thought it was ugly. But this just makes it look like a lunchbox handle. I can pick it up and put food in this. Um, again, performance wasn't bad. Suzuki's never really been that bad of performance. In fact, I love the cozy little feeling I get from the old Suzuki Altos back from the 90s. When I first time I went to Turks and Caicos back in sixth grade, the little island Caribbean, um, I went to Turks and Caicos. We went to a little Suzuki Alto from the Avis there. It was cozy and friendly and easy to be in. I've been in one of these as well. It's not good. The seats are bumpy and, uh, oh yeah. It looks a bit pinched at the front. Like, it looks very disapproving and pinched, but at the same time, it's got a massive bulldog style lower lip. I don't get it. And finally, if not a lunchbox, tell me that this thing does not look like a shoe. Yeah, no, it totally does. Let's move on to another example from a failing brand, shall we? No one likes this car, and I guarantee you at least some of you people were thinking when the video started, why is it not on the top of the list or on the cover of the video? Well, my friends, it's because it's not as bad looking as the Cube, but the Nissan Juke is terrible. Oh my goodness. Now, they mercifully stopped selling these in the U.S. a few years back, but in England, when I went over there a few months ago, they were everywhere in shopping centers, and sadly not in dumps where they belong. It's kind of a worse looking version of the already terrible looking Nissan Rogue, their crossover SUV. This lightweight family SUV, as you keep looking at my picture and remember how bad this is, it's got a hood that kind of goes <laughs> Like, I've made fun of some muscle cars, especially Chevys, 
uh, Chevy Camaros for having big hoods. That's because they have a huge engine. Now, this car doesn't. Well, at least the stock model doesn't because there is a twin turbo V6 version that has been tuned by Nissan's own tuning house, Nismo. It gives this family fuck ride on wheels a 363 brake horsepower at a top speed of 180 miles an hour. That's most sports cars cap speed. Whether you get, well, sorry, you shouldn't get, and if you do, you should need to go to a mental hospital immediately, but sorry, if you ever end up in, by some cruel twist of fate, either version, you're always sincerely sorry. Because then you have to be ever typed as someone that said, yes, I have ridden a Nissan Juke and I'm proud of it. No, you're not. You've ridden a Nissan Juke. You want to kill yourself. Um, please don't kill yourself. Suicide's a big thing. So please don't. Just, anyway, yeah. Moving on. Um, the front of it, it's, again, I've got the mustache. Also, I have double sets of eyes. Why, why, why? The headlights look terrible. It's like frog's eyes. Except the frog is trying to eat them. And, uh, oh yeah. Uh, from the front, I, I get what they're going for. It's a really cool looking wave design, right? No. It looks like a gelatin cubes. It looks like a jello mold, literally. Some kindergartner said, oh, I have jello. Punch, punch, punch. Here's your vehicle. Seriously, Nissan, get your act together. And um, this has been canceled in most countries. I'm very glad. They're still shipping out to Canada. What is wrong, Canada? You're such a cool place. Why have you done... Why have you agreed to allow the sale of this terrorist in a box? Anyway, let's move on to something that's not quite so horrifically flawed. <sighs> Moving on. Okay. I need to preface my statement from the end of the last clip. So in the end of the last clip, the Nissan Juke clip, I said that the next car on the list would not be so horrifically flawed. Well, it isn't, it isn't. Um, I, I know this is an ugly car. I know the Volkswagen thing is an ugly car. And I'm not kidding. They literally codenamed the, the project Thing. Um, but it is a Volkswagen, so it's gonna break down, obviously. But it does drive like a much better Beetle, so driving, yes. Also, I see a lot of these. I live in a town near Santa Cruz, California. Which is one of the last, I guess, real hippie-ish towns uh, on the West Coast of the United States. And so these things are everywhere. On the beaches, in the intersections, you can see them everywhere. And honestly, they look like one of the things you'd see driving around at a zoo. In fact, that's where most of them ended up as zoo, or I guess, county fair tour carts when you couldn't have the public decency to get a golf cart. Now, I have a soft spot for this car because it's one of my dreams to own one of these things one day. You can get one about $2,000 in a good running condition. As a Volkswagen, if it breaks down, all I really need is a hammer and a screwdriver to repair the damn thing. But uh, that's not to say it isn't ugly because it is. It's a Jeep, but made of cardboard putting it nicely. It's a box on wheels, again, literally. Although, it pulls off better than the Cube or the Scion XB. Uh, I'm not standing for this car, although I would like to own one. It's a horrific looking vehicle, and the hardtop arrangement is even worse. <sighs> Speaking of comedically bad things, we're back to Nissan. You have a wide selection when it comes to choosing what type of van you'd like to transport your cargo. Most people either go with an okay Dodge van, an okay Chevy van, a great Chevy van, or a supremely amazing Ford e-transit series. And then there are the people over in Japan who want Moshi ice cream as a car, apparently. Like seriously, think about it. It looks gummy and squishy and now I love this car just because it looks so stupid, but just like the Volkswagen thing, it's still a horrific mess. It doesn't drive well. It looks like, well, 
a bubble, I guess, the closest thing you can get to it. Maybe a Citroen 2CV, but uh, yeah. So I have never seen one of these on the roads in the US. I have seen four in England. And I literally, my I almost got whiplash looking back on the highway thinking, is that real? Did that really just happen? Yeah, so this thing, it's ugly as hell, looks ridiculous, off color, and it only comes in white. I mean, to be fair, most vans are in white anyway. But then they have this ugly little gray trim down the side, and hell, it has a sunroof? It's a cargo van. Literally, it's, it has the word cargo in its name. And yet, it looks like it might be able to transport a few mini fridges, and that's about it. So, do I like this van? No. Is it a good looking van? No. Do I think it's so bad it's good? Probably. <sighs> Nissan, you are absolutely ridiculous sometimes, and mostly not in the good way. Can you please go back to being bland and boring? Thank you.